fine youth that a growing child needs to learn how to handle himself. But nobody was teaching Paul. He wasn't a happy child at all. I couldn't put my finger on what was wrong. But I wasn't alone. There were a few people in our PTA who had noticed that something was lacking in our school and who had been trying to do something about it. But it seems that they were in the minority. Those physical education classes are too crowded. There's no organization. The teachers don't have any definite time to give instruction. Equipment's neglected, what there is of it. I tell you folks, those kids aren't getting physical education, and they aren't getting it in the high school either. Oh, come on now, Jed. Those buildings are the best that money can buy. Sure, but Henry, walk past that elementary school every day like I do, and watch most of those kids just standing there with nothing to do. You'll think different. Well, what do you want them to do? They're too young to do much of anything. Are they too young to learn how to play, Mr. Taylor? Of course. You are watching a film that was made in 1956 that encourages physical education in high school. This may surprise you, not everybody was in favor of. It's more than play. Nonsense. I agree with Henry. Turn him loose in the schoolyard and let him go. That's all you have to do. I'm David Hoffman, filmmaker, and I'm about to show you this film, which I didn't make, but was shown in my school to convince my school, unfortunately, to have a phys ed program. And you got to remember, this whole thing started because after the Second World War, they were testing the health of American boys, and the military found out a lot of people were getting blobby. We were not as well exercised as the Europeans. I think they were six times more in good shape than we were. My physical education teacher was a coach. They called him coach. He was a muscle man. He valued power, muscle, manly men, not the... 98-pound weakling. You ever hear of the 98-pound weakling? That was the weak guy who had sand kicked in his face at the beach. Well, I was a bit of a nerd, but I was 130 pounds. I was 98. But no way was I going to get into fights with people. And it was all required. This guy made us play football. I remember on the first play, I got the ball, and some guy knocks me over. That's not for me. That, like, what would you do that for? There was also wrestling. You had to do it. It was a requirement. So I have no idea how to wrestle. They show you a little bit. I go in the position. The other guy's on top of me. And in the first 15 seconds, he plows my face into the pad and blood starts coming out of my nose. That ain't for me either. They taught you about teams. They said, team this, team that. Well, I did not want to be in a team with a bunch of athletes. I wasn't an athlete. I was a musician. I was interested in politics. I wanted my own buddies around me, and I knew how to be in a team with them. You talk a lot. <laughs> I didn't get physical education, and a lot of people didn't. Now, I've been talking about boys' physical education in high school. There were girls having physical education, and all I can remember about it, I'm sure those women in the, who are watching this will remember something more, but for, I remember short skirts playing soccer, and all the boys noticed the short skirts. That, was like why we wanted to be in the gym when the girls were doing their thing. They wore these skirts and that was the issue. All in all, it was a requirement, nothing like today, where it's about your health. It was about other kinds of things and it was a chance for the athleticism of people to really show and to be applauded by everybody. And the rest of us just did it, hating every single moment of it. So before I show you the film, why was anybody against this? Well, parents said, well, we need a teacher to teach phys ed. Send them outside. Send them to the playground. Let them just deal with the ball and punching each other. A lot of parents felt that way. Also, they felt it detracted from academics. Does the school should not be involved in physical education or health or music or art. Deal with the academics. And those are the issues that this film is attempting to influence. 1956, exercise. Physical education in school. Bye, Mom. Dad. Paul! You've forgotten your shoes again. Here. Okay. Have a nice day, dear. Bye. I don't know what's wrong with that boy. Now, don't start worrying about Paul. He's coming along fine. No, he isn't. He doesn't seem to take an interest in things. What things? 
Well, you know, last night he asked me again to give him an excuse from gym class at school. Did you? Well, no, I didn't. The doctor told me last week there's nothing wrong with him. Of course there isn't. Well, I don't know. Something's missing. Oh, forget it, Helen. Paul's still a child. He'll come along, all right. I knew that a growing child needs to feel the thrills of success and the approval of other children his own age, and that Paul wasn't getting the chance. What's the matter, Paul? Scared? Come on, Paul, what's the matter? No muscles? I knew that a growing child needs to learn how to handle himself. But nobody was teaching Paul. He wasn't a happy child at all. I couldn't put my finger on what was wrong. But I wasn't alone. There were a few people in our PTA who had noticed that something was lacking in our school and who had been trying to do something about it. But it seems that they were in the minority. Those physical education classes are too crowded. There's no organization. The teachers don't have any definite time to give instruction. Equipment's neglected, what there is of it. I tell you folks, those kids aren't getting physical education, and they aren't getting it in the high school either. Oh, come on now, Jed. Those buildings are the best that money can buy. Sure, but Henry, walk past that elementary school every day like I do, and watch most of those kids just standing there with nothing to do. You'll think different. Well, what do you want them to do? Too young to do much of anything. Are they too young to learn how to play, Mr. Taylor? Of course not. But you don't have to hire a physical education teacher for that. All the same, Henry. It seems to me that physical education is more than play. Nonsense. I agree with Henry. Turn them loose in the schoolyard and let them go. That's all you have to do. You could see it in their faces, particularly on days when there was no playground to fall back upon. There just wasn't anything for them to look forward to, except a confused, frustrating half hour in the gymnasium. Something was bound to happen. Oh, it wasn't the teacher's fault. They were doing their best to develop well-rounded, healthy personalities. And in the classroom, they had a program and definite goals in mind. But when it came to the teaching of physical education, the teachers had little to offer except the same old games, disorganized and without any continuity from one grade to the next. Our children would get a feeling of emptiness every time they went off to the gymnasium. That's the feeling Paul must have had on the day it happened. Emptiness and confusion about his own abilities to play. All right, now, children, we're going to play a game of dodgeball. Uh, let's see. Uh, Bob, you be one captain, and um, Margaret, you be the other. All right, Bob. Look out, Paul. Let me throw. Yeah, you can throw. Get out of the way. Daddy. Come on, Come on,
surprise to me because I know Paul isn't that kind of a boy. So that's why I thought it was best to ask you both to come in. Well, I've had a feeling that something was wrong, the way Paul's been going off by himself. And those shoes, always forgetting them. Paul isn't a stupid child. I know that, Mrs. Farrell. It isn't just Paul, is it, Mr. Keller? No. As a matter of fact, it's not. Then there must be another reason you asked to see us. There is, Mr. Farrell. You see, I too have felt that something was wrong. And I think I know what it is. And I believe this incident of Paul's shoes puts you folks in a position to help me set it right. Well, isn't it a matter of scheduling more physical education periods or, or something like that? Not quite. It's a matter of finding the right people to put a real physical education program into effect. Let me explain myself a little further. Teachers here are fine people. They're well-trained educators but they haven't had special preparation for physical education. Like Frank Davis, for example, up at the high school. Well, can't he help out? Davis already has more than he can handle at the high school. Actually, he needs help, too. Well, you know, Mr. Keller, we've talked about this often enough at PTA, but we've never gotten anywhere. May I offer you a suggestion? Perhaps you could open up this whole question again at the PTA. Because I have an idea when parents truly understand what physical education is really about, they'll see to it that the right kind of a program gets community support. Now, can I count on your help? I'll say you can. If there's one thing a man likes to see, it's his boy getting the right breaks when it comes to growing up. My husband was wonderful. He not only organized a special meeting of our PTA, but he talked up the subject whenever he could with other fathers. It was his idea to have Frank Davis, the high school physical education teacher, come in and give us a professional point of view about physical education. Oh, I could go on and on, but the point is, we don't have an adequate physical education program in any of our schools. We see a great many children coming to high school without even the basic physical skills running, jumping, throwing, and the like. And we can't do much to help them the way we're set up now. They lack stamina, strength, endurance. They just can't do so many of the things they should be able to. All this has a deep effect on the way they grow. As so many communities have found out, if each child is to make the most of himself, then all need direction in physical activity and a program that's organized with every type of youngster in mind. Now, you just can't turn children loose to play if you expect them to learn to work together, play by the rules, and build strong bodies. In the elementary school particularly, the classroom teachers shouldn't be expected to do all this by themselves. They need the counsel of a physical educator who is especially trained for the job, someone who can supervise, instruct, help plan and point up the role of physical education in the children's lives. Someone to encourage and help. This person should be a graduate of a regular... And so it wasn't too long before our PTA group, together with other groups in the community that were interested in school problems, asked the school board to take action. That action took the form of obtaining more qualified help at the high school level. Additional professionally trained teachers of physical education were employed to assist in both the boys' and girls' high school classes. This meant more room in the schedule for new activities. It also meant that now, for the first time, Mr. Davis himself was free to take responsibility for the direction of the entire physical education program. One of his first steps was to secure the services of a consultant in physical education, someone who would work in our elementary school. Paul's school. With the individual attention she was able to give to the pupils and the help she was able to give to teachers, conducting demonstrations, helping to plan activities and the like, we parents began to realize that at last our children would have their chance to grow and develop as children should. And that's what has happened and has been happening ever since.
It's only over the years that a parent can get an inkling of what's going on. And even a wall can't tell the whole story. No one really can except the children themselves. And they're too busy growing up. But if you could telescope those important years of growth into a few short scenes, you might see the meaning of it all and understand, as we have come to do, what physical education is really all about. The mood of body and of personality that are so important to every young person's success and happiness in life. And if you could watch your children through years of activity on playground and gymnasium apparatus, you would know that this is not just a device that busy teachers sometimes use to keep children from getting into mischief. These are what they call self-testing activities, and they too have a definite purpose in physical education programs all the way from first grade into college. They are designed to let children find out for themselves just what progress they are making in mastering the skills of body control. For it is through such activities as these that children learn to watch for their own strengths and weaknesses and strive for better performances day after day, year in and year out. It all happens so fast a parent hardly knows that anything is going on. But they are growing in many directions. And if you could somehow condense the whole range of self-testing activities into a few moments, you could almost see that growth taking place. You could see how agility, strength, and endurance come to life under proper supervision. You could see how they do learn to handle themselves when there is someone around who is qualified to teach. You could see how getting better at things becomes part of their way of looking at life. This is the real meaning of self-testing activities. And suppose you could put many years of games and sports activities before your eyes in a matter of a few seconds. You would know that this is so much more than just play or keeping them busy. For games are as much a part of education as learning how to read and write. Even the simplest games are learning experiences for the very young children. And as the games become more advanced, they call into play more and more of the skills that children have learned in other parts of their physical education work. From their rhythmic activities come timing and coordination. From self-testing comes a sense of balance, strength, endurance, and the ability to do things with their bodies that more vigorous games demand. It's not easy for a parent to see the full meaning of all the games children play at school. And everything happens so fast as the years go by, there's hardly time to ask questions. But if you could watch a well-directed physical education program in action, you'd see that the games are taught so that all of the children regardless of size or physical type or particular talents, get a chance to play. In a good physical education program, their activities are intended to set up a spirit of team play that will be useful to the children in later life. Wherever they are, in college, at work, in community recreation programs, these children will be ready to pull their own weight as members of the team. But games are even more important than we parents realize because they are social activities, and they must be played with others according to rules that are the same for all, in many cases for boys and girls alike. Think of what learning about the rules of play means to a young man or woman who must soon accept responsibilities and learn about the rules of work and of daily life. Games are educational experiences because they are one of the most important ways children have of finding out what it takes to live with other people, to win, to lose, to compete. Gradually, through games, they discover the meaning of good sportsmanship, fair play, equal opportunity, ideals that go far beyond the playground in their significance for Americans. No, games aren't just a matter of keeping children busy. And neither is what the children do in schools where swimming is part of the curriculum. A child doesn't learn to swim in a day, a week, or a month. It takes years of training and practice. But if you could telescope it all into a few seconds, you would know how important it is to begin when they are young and to follow through with skilled instruction all along the line. You'd see how confidence develops as they take to the water and learn basic strokes. You'd see how basic strokes provide the background for preparation against the emergencies that every parent hopes will never come. You'd see them develop lifelong recreation interests right there in the swimming pool that you have helped to build. Oh, it all happens so fast, this development of a child into a young adult. 
And a parent almost never sees what's happening until it's too late to do anything about it. But if you know your children have had physical education in a school where activities are coordinated in a definite program, then you can be sure that they are getting every chance to grow and develop as they should. Some of them may grow up to be the kind of athletes everybody looks up to and admires. Men and women who keep setting new standards of performance in every kind of physical activity event. Star performers like these come out of schools where the right kind of physical education was begun early. Where there were challenges and a sense of the adventure at sport. Where there was someone to help. Where there was a chance for success and the approval of others. But most parents don't count on their children taking a place in the ranks of great performers. What we want most for them is that they grow up to become people who want to play, who know how to play and who are good enough and who stay fit enough to enjoy a wide variety of physical activity. Some will be skilled, some won't. But what matters is that they'll be participating. For nowadays, we are all coming to realize that people who like to play can usually get along well in the give and take of daily life. And that's what physical education is really all about. Hey, Johnny. I raised your home. I'm glad we found that out. And as I look at our children growing so fast, I often wonder how many towns have not made our discovery that physical education is a community responsibility. It depends on many people on teachers and school administrators who acknowledge the importance of physical education, on coaches and instructors who recognize that individual progress is on a par with team sports and the winning of trophies, on physical educators who know how to make a program work, and on parents who take action before it is too late. They grow up so fast 